been getting my sets ever since, basically. I'm uh, loving it. At this point, we should announce who your father is. At this point, who is your pops? My dad is Nicky Black Market. Yeah. So when you go out into a rave with Nicky, <laughs> what are you thinking? You need the Kellervision app. 24-7 mini documentaries, podcasts, live shows, DJ live streams, top five, subscription packages, plus products for all your podcasts and street culture sports. Download it from the App Store for free today. Crazy Biscuits, Killer Keller Podcast, live and direct central London or central as you need to be. Well done, congratulations, you made it here. If you've not got here before, then you missed a whole heap of things. Big shout out to graffitikings.co.uk and everybody that is serving themselves well on a television app, free download. It goes without saying, actually, the television app, because right here, right now, I have a very special guest. Uh, one who's not only part of the team, but is also making some serious fucking moves on the dance floor. DJ Mills inside the place. Hello, hello. <laughs> what are you saying? I'm good, man. How are you? Yeah, man. I'm good. Yeah? I'm good. I feel like uh, I feel like we've um, we've discussed a lot over the last few months. I mean, Indeed. plans are a go go. Yeah, I'm I'm really happy to be part of the team. Honestly, the Television app. Like, yeah. Honestly, you can catch my monthly mixes on the third Monday of every month. Representing purely drum and bass and jungle. Mm. That's me, DJ Mills. <laughs> you, know, like, you know what? She's been bred into the game. That's the truth. Like, I, I can't quite fathom the journey you've had. You're on a slow trajectory up. And what's crazy is you've got 10,000 hours in the bag. Yeah. That's crazy. It's happened so fast, honestly. It's crazy. Like, it went from... So, obviously, from the very beginning, obviously, I was born into the whole jungle culture, like listening to that from day dot, you know, my dad being there, um, slowly bringing me in it, you know, like I've just always enjoyed the sounds, mm. the drum and bass, the jungle. And then at one point I thought, you know what, let's buy, you know, a set of decks, you know, Let, let's just have a go, just see, see what my dad actually does. I always thought like, you know, I'd love to do what he does. I just always thought, there's no way I'm having just an office job, you know, like something boring like that. I always wanted nah. a fun job. Uh, yeah, I feel you. Exactly. And then, you know, bought my decks and uh, was just playing around on them for a couple of years, you know, just like enjoying myself, never thinking that anything would happen, you know. Yeah. And my dad was always saying, you know what, you should play out at some point. And I just thought, OK, well, I'm not ready yet because I was no way near confident enough to play out. So I just, you know, I was playing around in them. And he asked me every single year, do you think you're ready to play out? And I just kept saying, no, not confident enough. And one time he heard me and he was like, that's it. You're definitely ready to play out now. And and that was it. He just shot me out there. The boat just sailed and I've just been getting my sets ever since, basically. I'm uh, loving it. At this point, we should announce who your father is. At this point, who is your pops? My dad is Nicky Black Market. Yeah. <laughs> So when you go out into a rave with Nikki, <laughs> what are you thinking? Well, I just, I love it, you know, like I've been part but of that. But what about that first time? What, what would, first time? What, yeah, what was it like being... It was just weird to think, okay, that's my dad. Um, this is him doing his thing, enjoying his job, whatever. Like, I never really thought, like, I never knew, like, obviously how big he was or, like anything I think my first thing was like a festival I was really young maybe like 11 years old or something um but yeah no it was just it was nuts just seeing the crowd like going wild for him mm. crazy man I love it so love you're it. there with him and your first time of so you've gone from there and like all of a sudden you're like well I'm, I'm now going to perform he said go and I'm here and what nuts. the fuck no, your mind must have just been almost like full cycle of decades of 
getting an understanding and just it's second nature it's your pops you know what yeah I mean? exactly and the next thing he's like okay you're good yeah your mix is tight we're going yeah. you're going in what was that like I was like, no, like, this can't be it. Do you know what I mean? I was like freaking out. <laughs> do it, man. No, dad, you can't do this to me. But like, my first set, it was um, the first proper big thing. Like, obviously, I'd done a couple of things on the radio and stuff. He started to bring me out there on the radio, THC radio. They, they, they were THC. the first. Big All up day. the THC All gang. Day. And then straight away, my first proper event was New World Festival. Uh, on the epidemic stage whoa, 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 whoa. in front of thousands, yeah. literally thousands of people. Um, had a bit of a nightmare, actually. First time, what happened? Yeah, so obviously I was playing my first few tracks, yeah. thinking everything's all right. Yeah. And then um, obviously it was all fun, fun and games, but like I couldn't hear the monitors. The monitors weren't working and um, the headphones were all crackling up as well. So I was basically listening to what the crowd could hear in front of me, you know, mm -hmm. like, and I was kind of freestyling it over that. Obviously, they, they, everyone was going mad, going mad, so obviously mm. it was it was all right, mm -hmm. but, like, I was just freaking out. Like, I thought, I was like, Dad, is this what it always sounds like, you know? Is, is this mm -hmm. what it's like, like, when you're playing out, like, all the crackling sounds and not hearing anything? And he was getting so stressed. He was like, no, it's not always like this, so don't worry. But he was going to leave a bit before the end mm. just because he had another gig to get to. You know what he's like. He's got about a million gigs in a night. Um, but he ended up staying for the whole thing because he was scared that I wouldn't have been able to do it on my own with the sounds not working and Yo. stuff. But, but yeah, no, that, that was a bit of a scary one. But when I finished it, I was like, wow. Yeah, that that's where it kind of shot me out there. Epidemic, big up Grant from Epidemic, because Old epidemic all day. Definitely, because he he helped me out there. You know, there were there were a couple things on that show that he'd started to do differently. So he had me there with my dad, and then he brought on Innovator, mm. who's Belly Man's son, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then he got Ibot as well, who was thirteen years old at the time doing his own set so like all these new things and they all kind of worked you know what i mean it all worked That's so mad. yeah it was wicked new breed shit exactly you got my mind wandering for a second there when you mentioned that everything was going wrong and yeah i guess this feeling of oh my god of all the times i've only just got here i've only just showed up i got my set it's all going tits up <laughs> i remember um in fact it happens most times whenever a significant person or thing comes into my life I think by design, it just shouldn't be so easy. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's true. There's always something wrong, to be fair. Like, and then mm. it goes right at the end, you know? Yeah. So you you, go, you can go to all these gigs and you think everything's going to be perfect, but there's always something like something's wrong with the mixer or one mm. of the decks isn't working or the play button or something. Do you know what I mean? Like, mm. it's all about the adaption. You've mm. got to adapt always. Because mm. if you don't adapt... It's going to go tits up, like you said. Yeah, you've you know, got to move with it. Always. And it's interesting, we go down this road actually in conversation because I think out of everybody that's, out of anybody that's been on the podcast of the last 300 plus episodes, I think this is a really good opportunity for anybody that's learning to DJ, anybody that wants to apply themselves to the skill set. Yeah. You're, you're as much in, in a, a privileged place of being in these amazing environments and, and, and in an, an amazing ever-changing scene but also you're learning as you go and developing and also finding your own contribution yeah. to the craft you're you're bringing your own style you're bringing your own twist exactly it's a very interesting uh, segue to to anybody that is wanting a dj yeah you know what, I mean? what are the what are the things that you can advise what are the thing what are the pitfalls that you see well i'd say definitely try and you know, find your own style, you yeah. know, like find what sounds you prefer, what you want to mix together. Just, you know, like just whatever you enjoy playing, mm. play. Mm. Don't let anyone tell you different. Mm. Don't let anyone say, oh, I want you to play this. I want you to play that. Like, OK, yeah, if, if, you, if they want you to play that for a certain set, perfect, you know, get that ready. But if you want to play a certain thing, you know, play it because, you know, you enjoy playing that and they've booked you to play for what you play, do you know what mm. I mean? So definitely, that that's one tip I can definitely give. Just play whatever you enjoy playing. Yeah, because definitely. that's what, yeah. And you've got to trust that, haven't you? You've got to trust that what yeah. they're booking you for is the thing that will resonate with their... Exactly. ...their brand and their audience. Yeah, that's true. Drama bass is an ever-changing, genre-breaking, there's just sub 
genres within. Yeah. There really is like a, a niche audience for each. Yeah, each the genre, subgenres. It? Yeah, it's true. What's new coming up? What's the like? What's what for you is like the one where you're having to fit it into a, a music policy of yours. You know what? Like I'd say the the newest one would probably be Jump Up. Mm. I I love it. I love it. Like I love incorpor incorporating it into my sets, but I don't want to play it like as in I don't want to play jump up after jump up after jump up. Mm. I'd prefer to mix that in with other things. Mm. And like, I feel like the minimal as well, minimal techie, that's a new one coming out. Like, mm. I mean, obviously it's already out and like a lot of people play it, but that's a very small subgenre that um, that people play. Like, for example, my boyfriend, DJ Fleeky. Of type Fleeky. Big up the Day, fleeks. Come on. <laughs> um, he plays... Uh, the minimal techie kind of sounds mm. dark, minimal, yeah, 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 and that yeah. it's a very small subcategory. Um, he says that you know you you need the MC on top of the tracks for people to enjoy it, but mm. it's it's good though. It, it sound mm. always sounds very good, especially if you're mixing it in with like some jungle or like rollers kind yeah. of thing. Yeah, it, yeah, that's right. No, I feel exactly. that interesting the MC dynamic thing because it's true. Some subgenres really work well with MCs just. Pepper in the fucking. Yeah. Other times it's like you gotta give it space. You yeah, definitely. It, I guess that's the mark of a good DJ and a good MC. Yeah. Isn't it? So if you're working with a good MC, obviously they'll know when to be quiet. They'll know when to give you time to like play vocal tracks, for example. Mm. And like they'll know when to, you know, MC and. Mm. That's the yeah. difference between hosting and 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 frying bars down. Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. Definitely. Definitely. Um. You mentioned that you're doing a lot of stuff with a particular vocalist at the moment. Which, I am indeed. Yeah. So, yeah, her name is Kaya Fire. Um, she is, uh, she's Congo Natty's daughter. And um, me and her, we, we're kind of trying to open up new doors, basically, for the whole new generation thing. Mm. So, um, yeah, we're kind of trying to work on a little project at the moment together. Um, you know, just bringing back the full circle the full circle kind of thing. So mm. obviously my dad used to be Congo Natty's DJ <laughs> and now I'm trying to do things with her as well. So you could say that I'm I'm her DJ for certain things. Do you know what I mean? Passing like, a torch down. Yeah. What's it like working yeah. with a vocalist in a, in a drum and bass arena? Like, I mean, obviously there's decades of examples, but when you're going in cold and also arguably you're holding a torch for the thing that had happened, you're kind of, progressing it along generation, generationally. Yeah. That must be quite a trip, trying to figure it out. Honestly, so we've only done one set already, right? We, 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 there's more to come, obviously, things that we've been booked for. But um, the one that we did was at Shumba Youth's birthday bash. That was a couple of weeks ago at the Fox and Firkin. I saw the video, yeah. Yeah, that was really, really good event. But we're kind of trying, at the moment, we're trying to figure out each other's flavours and just the fact that, like... Obviously, I need to orientate my mix around her a little bit as well. Do you have a project name for it? I mean, we're, we're like in the making of it at the moment. We're not sure of a name or anything yet, but it's the very start. So like things will be happening this year. I can imagine dub plates and everything popping off. Like this could be that some be serious good. thing. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Still in the making. If you haven't checked out Mills's mix on the television, um, there's plenty of reasons why you should and there's plenty of places where you can. Um. One thing that I love is that you alternate within the genres. I love the dub plates, exclusives. I love the fact that you you do pay homage to... Well, I think it's just inherent. I think you just... You, it doesn't feel too distant, neither. Like, when you drop some new shit with some old shit, that that's fitting. I feel like drum and bass lends itself to that, doesn't it? Yeah, definitely. I feel like you do need to you know, have a bridging track in the middle. For example, if I was putting something really old with something really new, you need to make sure there's something in the middle that brings them together just so it doesn't sound too distant, you know, like mm. doesn't sound like they're clashing or whatever. But you definitely need like a little bridging track in the middle. For example, if I'm putting something like a, a jungle tune with some jump up, mm. you want to put in some break beats in the middle, you know, something that will bring them together and like just glue the... Transitional and all that. Yeah. Because, yeah, it does get lost, doesn't it? If you don't, you're taking people on a journey, isn't it? Exactly. 
Yeah, that's the, and that's the mark of a dude. That's the mark of like somebody that is talking like twenty years from now. Like that again. That just talks back to the ten thousand hours theory of like, like when did you when did you figure that stuff out? Like, I think it just kind of came over time when I was practicing stuff for like just styling my own things out at mm. home. Like, you know, just trying to mix and blend. And I thought, okay this could work, mm. you know, like, obviously some people told me, like, it sounds all right, you know, mm. it sounds good. So I just started doing it and, mm. like, you know, like, it depends what I'm feeling, what my mood is, the kind of stuff I want to play or, like, even, for example, if I'm in a rave, like, you can tell what people like by their reactions. As soon as you drop a certain genre, like, jungle or jump up, whatever, mm. like, straight away you'll see their reaction, then you'll know what to play. If, if they're, you know, they're jumping up, whatever, mm. you've definitely got to stay with that vibe, you know. If if you play something they don't like, it goes off track and mm. then then you know it shouldn't be, you know, that that's not the genre that they like. Mm. So you know what to play after that. That's pretty crazy. So there's a difference between a mix and, you know, a ready recorded mix um, and doing it live is like you pretty much are on the response of the... Yeah. That's, a, that's the... That's the performance level of a good DJ, isn't it? Because you've got to control the crowd, mm. you know. You you are the the selector. Yeah. Yeah. And it must be so fresh for you, like. Put big up Nicky. I bet Nicky's got like a couple of go to tunes that he's like, "Yo, it's that time." You <laughs> yeah, know what I, mean? I know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I know the ones. <laughs> um, but uh, I guess it's still reasonably close to you so far as well i've got these infinite you know tunes on on my usb you know there isn't that much restriction yeah where the fuck can i go you know what Honestly, i mean like there's there's just so many ideas and i'm like i want to put them all together now like there's just mm. so much i want to do at once and it's like okay take your time mm. you know how many times you, how many how often do you get like mp3s sent to you of like new joints you must get that for all the time really? all the time so my dad does send me a few every now and again, but then I've also got, you know, like the mailing lists as well mm. that people send. So you just got to sort through the tunes mm. and then think, do I want to play this? Do I like the sound of that? Mm. If not, obviously sometimes I don't play it, but I put a lot of them on my USB anyway, just like, just to, to know like what's there and have the selection basically. Just just so the people are up to speed because some people may not know this as being like a, 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 a culture in itself. There is a, there's DJ pool promo, yeah. Places on there that, that would send you stuff. Yeah. But that that can be quite time consuming. Yeah. Like sorting through them, do you mean? Yeah, so you yeah. get them you'll get them what once a week, once yeah. a month, quarterly, and you'll have like uh, eighty to a hundred tunes yeah. backed up that you haven't checked. Literally. Yeah. So you got you really gotta like take your time out sometimes and just just go through them really. Like mm -hmm. just put them all into record box. Have a listen. Record box been the the the, the pioneer yeah. like that's that's the program that the pioneer decks use, and then obviously you you queue your tunes, put it on the USB, and then it's compatible for record box and, mm. and for everything. So that so the tunes become the uh, the weaponry, and yeah, you just secret got secret ammo, secret of ammo. course. <gasps> God, that's good. Yeah, um, yeah, that must take a lot. Of time takes a while, yeah. But the, the good thing is, is that because you're getting new stuff all the time, you are always like, you know, always staying with the times kind mm. of thing. That's what my dad has always said: stay with the times. That's why he's still playing out at his mm. age. Do you know mm. what I mean? Because he's he's always, you know, staying yeah. with the times yeah, yeah. and like just carrying on with the new stuff. You know, he's yeah. always like incorporating the new tunes that he's getting into his sets yeah. rather than like, you know, just keeping all the old stuff. Because if you do stay with the old stuff, obviously you're going to get a lot of bookings for certain events. Mm -hmm. But then there's like certain things, for example, with the new lot, like the, the new generation, they want to hear like the rollers and all the new sounds. You might not get booked for those. Do you know what I mean? So you've mm -hmm. got to roll with it. Do you reckon... Pretty, I've always had this thought with drum and bass and, and white labels, producers, and mm. how that works. Big up cartoons as well, obviously. Come on. <laughs> um, record labels such as, they really pioneer and champion the artist. But I do often think to myself, you know, there's some dubs out there that just would never get a look in. And, and how does that work for a producer to know that he's in a catalogue of like 80 to 100 tunes that are getting sent to you at any given time? Yeah. And they just, it might just be in and out, but to them it's like a hell of a lot. But like, where do they 
get their kickback of the deal. Do you know what I mean? Do you mean... As a producer, producers, yeah. I'd say just the fact that, you know, certain DJs are playing the tunes and, like, getting the feedback as well for certain things, like, you mm. know, just to know that that was a good tune and then they can start producing certain things like it mm. or, you know, like, so they know that that's working with the crowd so they can keep going with that certain vibe, you know, mm. the style. It's a real relationship that... It's a dance that I think producers and DJ have... DJs having drum and bass, mm. which I find forever curious because um, it's still such a labour of love. And it's, it's the true. same with the DJs, isn't it? It's true. Very true, yeah. Does it ever get too much? Does the passion, like, does it get too much? Like, do you ever think to yourself, oh, man, no one's going to hear it the way I hear it. Why am I overthinking this? I do overthink a lot of things. Like, for example... Even the mix that I sent you, yeah, for your Which is television app. sterling. Come <laughs> on. I kind of just, you know, at the end of it, you're looking through and you're like, could have done that in that in a certain way there. But then, then you look back and you're like, overall, obviously it was, you know, it sounds all right. Mm. So you just got to do it at the end of the day, just put it out there. Like, there's obviously going to be certain parts of it that you don't like but then you master it and you kind of you adapt and mm. try and make it sound better like for example if something wasn't working you got to put the channel down and then like make the blend sound better and bring it back up or just something like that do you know what i mean like mm. you've always got to just do it there and it's then live talk you see this techers <laughs> talks coming out so what you so as you're mixing down you listen to it check whether it's coming on right if it's not then you fade it up instead of just yeah, letting it roll in yeah exactly you can use filters you can mm. even just like make sure like while it's live, like, you know, bring the jog wheel back or forward, whatever, while you're doing it, just mm. because it's better to do it live and just show that you're being authentic with it, you know? True. That you're doing it there and then. It's not like a pre-recorded mix or anything, do you know what mm. I mean? Like, you're doing it there and... Imperfections like, is a good thing. Yeah. Yeah, it's true, Because I, I don't plan my sets either. Yeah. So, like, I just do it there and I'm like, okay, let, let's try this with this, you know, let's see if this will sound good. Half the time, obviously, like, let, well, let's just hope mm, it's going to work, yeah, you know. Yeah. But, like... <laughs> but, yeah, it's story just of funny my games. career, that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's just funny games, really. Yeah, like, yeah. And yeah. you look like you're having fun. Yeah. The videos I've seen, um, bumping into your THC. Oh, yeah. Then watching it on the live stream. It's like every time I see you play, you look like you're having fun. Yeah. It's like you're jumping around the decks, da, 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 you know, all your mates are bouncing around and it's just like proper vibes. I love it, man. Absolute vibes. Like for me, I feel like when I'm doing the set, I feel a lot more like concentrated. Like I want to make sure like, you know, I'm actually matching the beat properly mm -hmm. and everything. Like then I'll take the headphones off and make sure like if the MC is saying pull it or whatever, then I'll react to that. But there's been a few times that I have just not, you yeah. know, not her because I'm too concentrated into the mix, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, that's one thing I need to learn more and just practice, just listening out for the bullets. <laughs> to, to be fair, I mean, MCs do like to make themselves problems surprised. It's more an error on their part being MCs that they can't, yeah, you can't hear them. exactly. Normally they're the first ones to be heard. What have you been doing near me? Aren't I blowing your speakers enough? Come on. <laughs> Pick up all the MCs yeah. out there. Um, but... Uh, yeah, in, in, in a uh, driven world of emceeing and, uh, you know, testosterone and whatnot, there is a few events that you're coming up with that are actually for a whole different cause um, and challenge, challenging certain uh, cultures that are going on in, in Clubland yeah, at the moment, aren't you? Definitely, yeah. You've got the um, female-only shows that are coming up. Talk exactly. to us about that. Sexy Lady Massive, that's the name of the event, and it's all girls, like, not a guy in sight. So literally all girls on the lineup, all girls in the crowd. Wow. And it's just, you know, yeah. to put out there that you can be confident as a girl going out without mm. having to worry about anything. Obviously, I'm not saying that, like, guys are bad or whatever. Mm. whatever. Like, just, just the whole, like, the date rape drug. Yeah, like, just, of course. Just certain yeah, things yeah, yeah. Like, just because some girls obviously don't feel confident enough to go out on their own or like you know mm. just promoting the whole thing of like girls can be confident you know with just girls that's amazing yeah no and it's true isn't it because even it's dynamics isn't it like there's a different level of hierarchy girls on girls boys on boys girls on boys like when you're in a club environment i think people often misjudge themselves like 
you need solidarity within a community. And I think yeah. girls actually spending time with girls and realizing actually we're not threatened. Yeah. We're not th- we're not threatening to each other. Yeah, you know I mean, like yeah. I think that's as much important as like yeah, the drug aspect and how dangerous it can be and how mis- 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 uh, misleading it can all sometimes yeah, be. Yeah, exactly, yeah. It's scary. I bet you've seen a lot of things over the last... Since lockdown has opened up, but you've seen a lot of things recently in the club land. It's just mm. like... I obviously go uni as well, so, like, there's there's a lot on my plate at the moment with studying, doing my dissertation, you know, studying for exams and then having music at the weekend, sometimes during the week as well, if there's mm. a random show every Big up the uni crew. Big up the uni crew all day. Do they know what you do? Do they know the, they know the deal? Um, you know what, yeah, I've never, like, put it out there that I even go uni. Like, I did, obviously my friends and stuff know, but... You've just done that. <laughs> yeah, big up the Hertfordshire crew. <laughs> the Hertfordshire crew, you know who you are. Yeah, so um, I, I study IT management for business, so, like, the IT part of business, basically. Wow. And I just finished a placement at Walt Disney, the Walt Disney headquarters. It, well, it was meant to be in Hammersmith, but because, obviously, COVID happened during yeah. that year, done it all from home. Yeah. So big up the Disney crew. Hold, hold tight. Like Disney you crew, <laughs> yo, you, you get in the sense, people out there, that you're a little late to the party already. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> All roads are leading to successful things. It's like it's wicked that you're you're here, you're present, and you're making it happen. Uh, I Thanks. think I think the drum and bass, the music, the DJ scene. Needs the mills in the house, that's for sure. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm here now, but I'm I'm all about bringing the female DJs. You know, like mm. always there for the you know getting the girls on the decks. It's nice to you know bring in the feminine side, so it's not always just all guys on the lineup. You know, like bringing mm. some girls in there, like mm. yeah. Future's bright, people. Mills, thank you so much for joining us, though. Thank you for having me. Honestly, it's been a a wicked time. Like, I've never fully had a a chat, like an interview with someone before either, so it's it's a different vibe, and and I loved it, honestly. Yeah, yeah. man. Come on, rockin' to the best of a killer kind of podcast, man. Come on. (laughs) Shout out to you, my dear. Wicked. Thanks for having me. More soon. More coming. More coming. There you go, Leo. Straight from the horse's mouth, all right? Introductories aside, Check this lady out, DJ Mills, on the television app. But not only that, if you're in a club in an area, get on her timeline. You know what time it is. She's out there playing. We're out here on the streets. We're doing this, all right? Killer Killer Podcast out like it was out of fashion, all right? You stay lucky. Don't talk to anyone. I wouldn't. (laughs) Peace. (laughs) 